Now this question, it came with a hit, but before we talk about that, I just want us to look at this question just on the face of it and see why a hit is given so you recognize this next time even if you don't get a hit, okay? How can we tackle this thing? When you look at it, what kinds of strategies do we have in our belt that we could try? Any suggestions? Okay, we already... You got straight to the hit. I'm going to talk about that in a second. Okay. Uh, Vince, so you had a suggestion? Maybe we could use substitution. Maybe okay. Maybe. You could try a substitution, right? Now, when you say, all right, mm -hmm. that's right, a substitution might be let u equal 1 plus cos x, or let u equal just cos x by itself. That ends up being problematic, though, because if we're expecting such a substitution, when we change the variable of integration, what are we going to introduce when we change it? We're going to introduce a sign, right? Because you need the derivative of that cos. And I don't see it anywhere there. What else could I do? Yeah. Um, you can multiply top and bottom by y minus cos x. Okay, so you could try it. So what we're, what we're looking for there is I'm looking for a square, right? I can deal with squares. So this is half of difference of squares. If I multiply through, as Reynard suggested, by 1 minus cos x, I'm going to get 1 minus cos squared, or the denominator, and that's going to give me uh, 1 over, that'll be sine squared, or the denominator. And I could actually, I could do some work with that, okay? Now, that's got a little more merit than the previous one, but you can see as well, it sort of, it starts to complicate things, right? It starts to get much more complicated. Now, the other avenue which we could take down is that we could try and use some other kind of identity. We just thought about the fact that growing identity. The identity they suggest is, now Jan, I think you said it, right? You can look at this and you can say, ah, what about double angle? Now, double angle is not at all the first thing you would think because there are no double angles there. Except there is. I mean, really, there's a double angle. You can make a double angle anywhere because just you've got an x and you've got two x. But you've got theta and two theta. If you double something or halve it, you have those kinds of formulas you can use. So here's what I'm going to write here. Uh, what substitution am I going to introduce? I'm going to say this is the integral of 1 on 1 plus. Now to write x and take advantage of all the things I know about double angle, I'm going to write the x is 2 times x over 2. There's my double angle there. It just happens that the angle I'm sticking in is x over 2. So now this is in the form 1 plus cos 2 theta, where our theta happens to be x over 2. What identity could I get out of this? Where did this come from? Okay, so yeah, if you, if you want to think, the line before this is cos 2 theta, which is 2 cos squared theta minus 1. You remember that? Okay, so that's why the minus 1 came over here. It's plus 1. So what you really have is 2 cos squared theta here, right? Now, as I've just established, the theta that I'm thinking about is x on 2, okay? So I'm going to do my substitution over here. 1 plus cos 2 theta is 2 cos squared theta in which, for this case, is x on 2. Yes. Okay. Now, that's the, that's the hardest part of this, recognizing there's an identity there which is not at all obvious, and that's part of what extension 2 is about. We're going to, like, just wait until we blow open um, all the number of kinds of functions you can integrate and recognize them as part of the hardest thing. So, suggestions. What do I do now? Take the half out. Okay. Now, interestingly, I could take the half out, but there's something else I could do which actually will lead me to keep the half in. 1 over cos squared, that's still a bit of a mess. How could I write that in a form that would make it easy for me to integrate? Sec it's sec squared, isn't it? So when I see that that'll be sec squared, yeah. see how there's an x on 2 there? That means it's reverse chain rule. That means I want the derivative of the inside function, which is a half, which I have in there. So I might as well just let him stay put. A half sec squared x on, sorry, I haven't done that yet. x on 2, okay? And now you can see, great, that's about as standard as it gets, really. That's tan of x on 2 plus by constant. Okay? Obviously, there's no harm if you took that half out, but then you're like, oh, we're going to have to put the half back in, and they cancel. Okay? So does that make sense? You see that? So the hint that was given to you was, try the double angle formula. But now that you know, like, the double angle formula can be used in reverse, right? And that's exactly what we did with t results, right? Um, if t equals tan of theta on 2, Right? Then we can say, okay, tan theta is equal to 2t on 1 minus t squared, right? And then we go sine, we go cosine. Now all of these, like you see how using this comes out of using the double angle formula, right? So every double angle formula is a half angle formula in disguise. We're just not used to using that in a two unit or extension one context because it's an extension two skill. 
okay? All right, now that's all I'm gonna say really about the, um, the standard uh, trig integrals that you're going to encounter. Let's have a look at the inverse trig uh, integrals that you're gonna see. And I'm gonna push a little further past the standard forms that you've seen and have a look at when we need to muck around with the algebra. Here it is. Okay, so here's one that I'd like us to have a go at. So this is example two. So, I've given you an enormous leg up on this question because like I said, like you encounter this in an exam and there's, there's nothing, that's it. There's no context, there's nothing that, that tells you, hey, big grid flashing sign, this is the kind of integral you're going to encounter, okay? But one of the things we met in extension one was, it's weird, but it's unavoidable. Even if you have something that's just, just algebra here, you don't always end up with algebra after you integrate. Sometimes you end up with a trig function or an inverse trig function, right? So B ended up giving you this enormous clue of, hey, this is going to be inverse trig of some kind, right? What clues do you have in the integrand that tell you what direction you might be heading in? Yeah? Maybe you have this kind of form of 1 over a squared something. Okay, so, been hanging around me for too long. So when I look at this, right, when I think about inverse trig, I've really only got two options, don't I? I mean, I've got three, but two of them are identical, except for a, a negative sign. I'm either going to have... 1 over the square root of a quadratic, or I'm going to have 1 over a quadratic. Right? So when I look at this, this is leading me towards wh where is that going to go? What will the integral be? It's going to be tan inverse of some kind, okay? But it's not at all obvious. Like, I, I, if I had something like that, that I could deal with, okay? But what's the difference between this and this? Yeah, there's actually, like, this extra term here means a horizontal shift. Okay, actually means more than a horizontal shift, but we'll deal with that in a second. So what I want is I want this denominator to look something like one on uh, like one plus u squared, or at least like a squared plus u squared, where u is my variable and a is a constant. Okay. So here's how I'm going to make that happen. We all hated completing the square back in the day because we we're like, oh, can we just get to the quadratic formula? But I hope I've convinced you since then. Completing the square super useful. A context like this is perfect, right? I wanted something squared. So I can't just have x squared. I'm going to have to have something else squared. And that of function is my u. I'll do a substitution of some kind. Okay? So what square is hiding inside here when you complete the square? Yeah. X plus 2? Yeah. This is x plus 2. All squared. Now, where does that come from? Right? What I'm doing in my mind is saying this really is x squared plus 4x plus 4. That's the completion of the square. But I have, I don't have 4 there. So on top of the 4, I've got a leftover, a remainder. Yeah, do you see what I've done? So all I've done is just rearrange a little bit so that I see this format coming up. Does that make sense? OK, at this point, not compulsory, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to say let u equal x plus 2. It's simple enough, I think, that you probably could do this in your head, but you guys know how skeptical I am about my own head. So I'm going to do all the steps of the substitution properly. Uh, that's a u. It's 1. Okay. So that means I can put the d on dx wherever I like. When I do my switching now, I'm, like, I'm going to actually do the substitution. I'm going to put that du on dx on the numerator, so he's nice and easy to cancel with the dx that's already there. And then on the denominator, I have what? Cool. I'm even going to go ahead and write that as u squared plus 3 squared. Okay. Now, you do have this on your reference sheet, but do you remember what you get, what the standard form is when you integrate something in this form? Yeah, good. I'm going to have 1 on a times tan inverse of x on a, right? Which, well, in this case, my actual variable is u, isn't it? So I'm going to have u on 3 there, and it's indefinite, so there's my constant integration. Okay. Right, we've done all the hard legwork. Let's just tidy this thing up. Go back to x's because that's where the question began. And I'm home. Hooray. Okay. Yes. Is it essential to do the substitution? Because at the second line, um, I can see that it's x squared plus x squared. Yeah. So if you can see this, 
and recognize that is in this form and go straight here, go for it. Go for your life. And if you're confident, obviously you save all of this time. Okay, and which on this board is like almost like it's like a third of the work there, or at least the time of writing. And so that's that's okay. In much the same way, if I saw this question, uh, I'd be um, sorry. Is that what I want? No, that's not the exact number I wanted. Uh, six. Sorry, I'm going the wrong way. Um, if I saw that, I'd be a little bit disappointed. If any of you went ahead and did a substitution, I'd expect you to just go straight to the form, okay? Um, because yeah, this is we learned these like months and months ago. But yeah, here I've done it because I'm still I'm still kind of new with these investigating tools, so that's why. Okay.